Hey there guys and welcome back to Dark Souls 2. In the last video we took care of the introduction as well as the opening cutscene. And now we are at Things Betwixt, which is the first area of the game. Alright, so there are some items that we need to collect in this area, but before we do that, let's quickly head to the nearby hut and get our character creation taken care of. I'm also going to be giving you guys a tutorial on each character uh, class and what they do and what they specialize in as well as the equipment they start off with and um, the gifts that you can pick as well. <laughs> what seems to be the ruckus? It's an undead. An undead has come to play. <laughs> they all end up here. All the ones like you. You spoke to that kind old dear, didn't you? <laughs> You're finished. You'll go hollow. Yes, you will become one of them. Hollows prey upon them, feast upon their souls. This is the fate of the cursed. <laughs> So after the scene, you'll be prompted to uh, enter a name. Alright, so after you receive the human effigy from the old lady, um, you can now create your character however you want. First, you're going to select a class and gift. You can change your body, your face, and advanced settings. So first off, let's uh, quickly take a look at the class and gifts. I'm going to quickly explain what each class does and their specialty. Alright, so starting off, you have a warrior. So now, the warriors... Um, our battle scarred warrior high strength and dexterity skilled with weapons so as you can see in the bottom right hand corner you can see the starting stats um, for the warrior you start off with very high strength um, and average dexterity you have some decent health which is represented by vigor the heart on the lower right and everything else is pretty much uh, evened out it's low numbers but they're evened out allowing you to um, quickly uh, start upgrading with whatever you want to do also if you want to cast um, spells or if you want to cast miracles um, you're going to be used increasing your intelligence for spells and your faith for miracles so everything else besides strength and dexterity is pretty much evened out for the warrior but most importantly the warrior is the only class that lets you start off with a shield so <clears throat> 
If you're looking to start off with a shield, then I would highly suggest to pick the warrior. If not, then it's no big deal because I'm going to be showing you guys where a uh, shield is very, very early in the game anyways. So don't just pick this class just because he has a shield and you're thinking that you really need one. Um, but if you are trying to use strength based weapons, uh, the warrior is definitely uh, a good start. He starts off with the hard leather armor, the uh, shield, and a broken straight sword. Now the broken straight sword isn't going to do very much for damage at all. But don't let that stop you from picking this class because you can pick up plenty of weapons in uh, the early, early stages of the game. It won't take but 10, 15 minutes into the game to find a good weapon. Alright, so moving on, we have the knight. Now this is pretty much, uh, I have a feeling this is what most people are going to start off as, the knight. Um, so he's a traveling knight with high HP and adaptability. Tough to take down. Now the knight starts off with a good amount of H HP or health. Starts off with 12 vigor. He also starts off with decent decent strength at 11 and average uh, dexterity at 8. Also his adaptability is at 9 and his uh, endurance is at 6. He also has decent fatality allowing you to equip some good equ equipment without being weighed down. But the thing that he's lacking is intelligence, so if you're trying to be a uh, cast spells, you're going to have to put a good amount of work into the intelligence in order to be able to cast spells. However, he does start off with slightly higher faith, so uh, you can actually, if you're trying to cast miracles, it won't take very much effort to uh, increase your faith because it starts off at 6. So again, the, um, the knight is a good all-around starting class for beginners because of the high health. And he starts off with a broadsword, which is a pretty decent damaging weapon. He also starts off with the falcon falconer armor set without the helm. And he starts off with a few life gems as well. So again, the knight is a good all-around class if you're going to be a melee character. If you're asking who I would prefer over the warrior and the knight, well, they're both pretty much equal, but I would have to say the knight. Um, just because my play style, I like starting off with high health so I can invest in other stuff. But that's just my play style. It's up to you who you want to pick. Um, the warrior does have a lot more strength, so you wouldn't have to worry about increasing your strength. But then again, you would have to make up for it for health. Moving on, we have the Swordsman. Now, the Swordsman is a finely skilled Swordsman. Fights gracefully with strong weapons in both hands. Now, the Swordsman starts off with light armor, the uh, Wandering Traveler cloak and outfit. He also starts with an upgraded broadsword, a plus one broadsword, and a plus one scimitar. So you have two very good weapons in your hands. They're already upgraded, so you'll be doing decent damage at the beginning of the game. However, the only drawback about starting off with the Swordsman is he, is he has very low health. He starts off with 4 Vigor, so you're going to want to put a lot of uh, stats into Strength right away, or Strength, <laughs> you're going to want to put a lot of stats into Vigor to get your health up, but other than that, everything else is fairly high. He has decent Strength at 9, and he has a really high Dexterity count at 16, allowing you to equip fast weapons and crossbows and stuff right off the bat. Um, his stamina is also pretty high, or his endurance starts off at 8, so you have a decent amount of stamina. Um, his adaptability is at 6, but he has really low vitality, so you won't be equipping heavy armor unless you want a fat roll. Um, you're going to have to do some work with the vitality. He has an average uh, stat and intelligence, allowing you to cast spells uh, early in the game without much effort. Um, his attunement's at 6 and his faith is at 5. So those are pretty leveled out. If you want to be a miracle user or something, you wouldn't have to make too much, um, too much progress or spend too many points, you know. You can do it pretty quickly. Again, the Swordsman is a great starting class, um, but I would not recommend it for beginners because of the low health count. Um, until you can actually get some health with the Swordsman, you're going to be dying a lot, <laughs> or you have to play really safe. Moving on, we have the Bandit. 
a merciless outlaw, high dexterity, skilled with bow, fights well at various ranges. Now, this guy is good if you're gonna if you're going to be a dexterity build using fast weapons and crossbows and stuff like that to um, deal damage at a distance or ranged characters this is a good start um, he has pretty good strength at 9 high dexterity at 14 his vigor is pretty high so you'll have decent amount of health at 9 um, he has decent endurance so you'll have some stamina but he has very low adaptability and the lowest of all um, intelligence out of all the characters except Deprived. So if you're going to be a spellcaster along with your melee character, I would highly suggest, unless you're going to use Miracles, to pick somebody else because his intelligence starts off at 1. However, his face starts off at 8, so you can actually cast Miracles if you want to do that. He also has very, very low attunement at 2, so you won't be able to equip any spells, and your casting spe speed is going to be very slow. So again, if you're going to use a bow and you want to fight with fast weapons like katanas or simters or uh, something like that, uh, the bandit is a very good starting class. Moving on, we have the cleric. Cleric on pilgrimage, high faith and miracles guide the way. So the cleric is going to be your main character, the character you're looking for if you are going to be casting miracles. Um, he starts off with 12 faith, which lets you cast miracles right off the bat. He also has 10 attunement, so your attunement's going to be high, allowing for decent casting speed and also to equip different spells. Um, his vitality is actually at 8, uh, which is pretty high, so you can equip some heavy gear if you want, making the cleric an excellent tank if you want to equip some heavy armor and then just cast spells. He also has 10 vigor, so you're going to have a good amount of health health also but the thing it's lacking in is dexterity stamina or endurance and adaptability so if you're trying to cast miracles the cleric is your guide um, he starts off with the cleric robes and a chime for casting miracles he also starts off with the emit force moving on we have the sorcerer Knowledgeable sorcerer cast sorceries with high intelligence and attunement. So this is going to be your starting class for those of you who want to cast sorcery. He starts off at level 11. He has very low strength, only at 3. And he has low health because his vigor is only at 5. However, he has decent uh, dexterity. And his stamina starts off at 6. Or his endurance, I mean. I don't know why I keep saying stamina. Your endurance is the same thing as stamina pretty much. Um... So his endurance starts off at 6, so you'll have a decent amount of stamina. His adaptability starts off at 8, which is your primary stat for increasing agility. But his vitality is also pretty low, only at 5. So you're going to have to increase that if you want to wear some heavy armor or heavier armor. However, he does start off with the intelligence of 14, which is very high, uh, allowing you to cast sorcery right off the bat. He also starts with Soul Arrow, so you'll have magic um, right off the bat. His attunement is at 12, so you'll have pretty fast ca the fastest casting speed out of all of the beginning classes. Also, he'll be able to equip two slots of magic, I believe. Maybe just one, um, but you'll be able to equip two slots of magic very soon if you put a couple points into attunement. His faith is only at 4, so if you're going to want to cast miracles along with sorcery, you're going to have to put some work into faith. But all around, this guy is uh, the best if you're trying to cast um, sorcery at the beginning of the game because of his high, uh, in his high intelligence and high attunement. He starts off with the sorcerer's robes and a staff. Next up, we have the Explorer, which is a new class in um, Dark Souls 2. A well-traveled Explorer, not terribly powerful, but has many items. So this guy doesn't really specialize in anything. However, he does have a lot of throwable items that you can use in the beginning of the game, which is useful for taking care of powerful enemies at the beginning of the game because he can stand back at a distance and chunk uh, damaging items that can kill the enemies. Um, the Explorer is an a average class all around. Um, 
he starts off at level 10 his strength is at 6 and dexterity is at 6 which is kind of low but you it's not too terribly low so you can actually start building your character however you want his vigor is at 7 so he has decent health his endurance is at 6 decent stamina he has surprisingly high adaptability at 12 his vitality is at 9 so you can equip heavy armor with just a little bit of work into vitality his um intelligence and faith are both at five which is pretty low but it's not as low as it could be <laughs> um, so if you want to cast either sorceries or miracles you won't have to put too much work into it but it, it does start off rather low and his attunement is at seven and the the explorer starts off with uh, just normal um, traveling gear, traveling merchant gear. <clears throat> and he also starts off with a dagger. Finally, we have the Deprived. Now, for those of you guys looking for a challenge, the Deprived is the way to go. He starts off with no gear, no healing items, and at level 1. However, his stats are all at 6. So if you can work on um, if you can work on your character stats um, and level him up at the beginning, the deprived actually has a lot of potential because all of his stats are at six, which is a lot higher than most of the other stats. And you got to think that the other stats already are at level, or the other characters are already at level ten or twelve where the deprived starts off at level one so you can actually um, build the deprived however which way you want and since he starts off at such a low level it's going to be able to very easily level up um, even though he doesn't start off with any gear that's really not a problem because of the fact that you can find pretty much everything you need at the beginning of the game so yeah And finally, the description for the Deprived is unclothed, origin unknown. Has nothing to fight with except life-affirming flesh. <laughs> so again, if you want the greatest challenge, go ahead and pick the Deprived. Um, I'm pretty sure this is what I'm going to start off with. Um, I was going to either use a Knight or a Swordsman. But I began to start thinking if I choose the Deprived and then build him however I want, you guys can actually see how you can customize your character and develop him into whatever you want specifically um so yeah i think i'm going to start off with the deprived moving on to the gifts um now the gifts are pretty much uh your starting item that you can choose from at the beginning of the game those of you who have seen the or who have played demon souls and dark souls one know that at the beginning of the game you can choose a gift to have now while they're not as rewarding as they were in Dark Souls 1 for example the master key that you could start off with lets you open up doors that you couldn't open unless you have picked the master key as a gift uh, there's really nothing that important in the gifts in this game however they do give you some things that are pretty decent you know so I'm gonna go ahead and explain what each gift does First of all, you can start off with nothing, receive no gift. Now, I really don't see why anybody should pick no gift unless they just want a hardcore challenge. But then again, gifts really don't make it that much easier anyways. So, I mean, I guess you could choose no gift if you wanted to. Um, next up, we have the life ring. This ring of old slightly increases HP. So this ring will increase your maximum health slightly. Um, I would not recommend choosing this because you can actually get it very early in the game. Um, so I would not, I would not recommend um, selecting the life ring unless you start off with like the swordsman or the deprived and you have very, very, very low health. Um, I wouldn't recommend it because you can get it very soon in the game. Next up, we have a human effigy. Now this is new to Dark Souls 2. For those of you who have played Dark Souls, the original first one, um, you will be familiar with human effigies. Um, 
they weren't in Dark Souls 1, but instead they replaced humanity that was in Dark Souls 1. So for those of you who have played Dark Souls, you know the humanity actually restores your human state. Well, the same thing is said for the human effigy, except there's no longer humanity in the game. It is replaced by human effigy. So pretty much just think of a human effigy as a humanity in Dark Souls 1. They do the same exact thing. Except for in this game, if you die, you go hollowed, which slightly decreases your maximum HP. And if you keep on dying, then your maximum HP will keep being reduced to its overall amount, all the way down to 50% of your maximum health. So in order to reverse that and get all your HP back and return human, you have to have a human effigy. Also, human effigies are kind of rare in the beginning of the game. So if you want, you can choose this as a starting gift. It wouldn't be a bad choice, but there are better choices in my opinion. <clears throat> but yeah, the description for the human effigy is a familiar looking effigy. Returns the hollowed to life. So pretty much it returns you to human whenever you go undead. Again, human effigies replace humanity. That was found in Dark Souls 1. Next up we have the healing wares. Now this is a pretty good um pretty good gift for beginners. I would recommend this for most new newcomers to Dark Souls 2. Um various items used to cure poison and restore HP, essential for anyone traveling Draglink. Now <clears throat> you uh for the healing wares you start off with small uh small life gem, some healing moss to cure poison and um and radiant life gem and an old life gem so you'll start off with a, um some good healing items and some stuff to cure poison now this is highly recommended for newcomers or beginners because you can start off with extra healing items so if you're having trouble getting used to the game or you're losing a lot of hp and you need to heal um this is the great um gift for beginners also because your Estus Flask isn't readily as available as it was in Dark Souls 1. So in Dark Souls 1 you start out with 5 Estus Flasks so you could heal up to 5 times. Well in this game you only start off with 1. Yes only 1 Estus Flask and actually you don't even start off with it at the beginning you have to find it. So again the healing wares is highly um, recommended for beginners. Next up we have the Homeward Bone. Now those who have played Dark Souls 1 are familiar with the Homeward Bone. It returns you to the bonfire last rested at. Having one may ease your mind but there are no easy journeys. Now pretty much what a Homeward Bone does is it allows you to instantly travel back to the last bonfire you visited. So bonfires in this game upon reaching and resting at a bonfire you not only reset all the monsters in the area, but it also restores all your essence flask and all of your health up to maximum. Unless you're hollow. Um, so pretty much the Homer Bone is pretty useful, but I would not recommend it as a starting gift simply because you can buy them for very cheap early on in the game. Next up we have the Seed of a Tree of Giants. Now this is also new to Dark Souls 2 that wasn't in the previous versions. Um, a seed grown from a tree of giants, ineditable. Now they don't really give you too much of a description for this item. Now I'm going to basically tell you what it does. Um, a Seed of a Tree of Giants is an online play item. So in this game you will get invaded. Um, whenever you're playing through the game or whenever you enter a specific area it will trigger an invasion either by a NPC which is a non-playable character in the game if you're playing offline or you'll be invaded by another real player online when you're playing online so the seed of the tree of giants turns the enemies in your world against the invader so when a, normally when an invader invades your world none of the enemies go after him allowing him to just focus on attacking you and trying to kill you. Well, this is especially useful if someone invades you and you fight them and they're low on health. Sometimes they will run behind the enemies and try to heal themselves because the enemies don't hit them or attack them, but they still attack you. 
So pretty much if you're fighting an invader and you have them really low on health, sometimes they'll run behind the enemies and try to heal up and you can't get to them because you have to kill the enemies in order to get to them. So what a tree of a seed of a tree of giants does is it turns the enemies in your world against the invader. So if they try to run behind those enemies and heal up whenever you almost have them dead, uh, you can just pop out a seed of tree of giants and boom, the enemies will turn on them and start chasing them down. So it's very useful if you're playing online. And also I would recommend getting this as a starting item if you're going to play online. But there are also a couple other options I would recommend getting. Next up we have the bonfire aesthetic which is new to Dark Souls 2 as well. Toss into a bonfire to raise the strength of nearby foes, only for those who seek greater challenges. Alright, so what the bonfire aesthetic does is at any time at a bonfire, you can burn one of these to increase the enemy's strength and health at each area. Or at the area next to the bonfire. So pretty much, um... A bonfire aesthetic will put regular enemies into a New Game Plus state. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with New Game Plus, after you beat the game the first time, you can choose to start a New Game Plus where the enemies will be stronger, have more health, and deal more damage. So basically what a bonfire aesthetic does is it automatic automatically lets you... Um, turn the enemies into a new game plus state making them have more health and deal more damage so I would only suggest using a bonfire aesthetic if you want the enemies in that area to be tougher and have more of a challenge or if you're soul farming in that area and you want to get more souls from the enemies for example if you use a bonfire aesthetic in a certain area the enemies are going to be stronger, have more health, and deal more damage, but also they're going to give you more souls when you kill them, allowing you to soul farm to get a lot of souls in whichever area you use the bonfire aesthetic in. Also, in Dark Souls 2, the enemy respawns are limited, meaning that if you're soul farming in a particular area and you kill all the enemies 10 times in a row, meaning you kill the enemies, rest at a bonfire to respawn the enemies, and kill them again, if you do that 10 times, the enemies won't respawn back and they're going to be gone forever. Unless you use a bonfire aesthetic to respawn the enemies. Not only respawning them, but making them harder to kill. But also yield more souls. So now that you know what the bonfire aesthetic does, this is also another item I would recommend starting off with because they're scarce to find in the beginning of the game. Finally, we have the petrified something. A simple petrified lump. It may be of some use someday. Now, the petrified something has absolutely no use in its normal state. For those of you familiar with Dark Souls 1, you'll remember Snuggly the Crow. The little bird in the nest that you can find that you can trade items to. So the petrified something you can trade to the crows in this game. So pretty much the only use for the petrified something is to trade to Snuggly the Crow. But also, um, the first playthrough I did, I ended up choosing the petrified something. And at the very beginning of the game, I traded it to the Snuggly the Crow at the beginning of the game. And I got a Titanite Slab, which is the best upgrade um, Titanite you can get. <laughs> so I got very lucky and got a Titanite Slab from the petrified something. However, the stuff that you receive from trading the petrified something to Snuggly the Crow is random. Meaning that you will not get a specific thing you want. It's all random. So if you want to get a random item from Snuggly the Crow, I would highly suggest to pick the petrified something. If you don't want to do that, then I would not suggest to pick it. Alright, so now that I've explained each character class in detail, as well as the gift you can select, um... We're going to move on. If you want my final um, opinion on the best things to choose, it would have to be either the Human Effigy, Healing Wares, Seed of a Tree of Giants, Bonfire Aesthetic, or a Petrified Something. So there you guys have it. Um, 
that's your uh, rundown on the gifts. And for me, I think I'm going to go ahead and pick the... Let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and pick the healing wares. Alright, so with that you can go ahead and finalize the character creation. after you have chosen your character and your gift and after the scene has played you're finally ready to start your journey in Dark Souls 2 so I'm gonna cut the episode here and then I'll see you guys next time wherever we get some items before moving on we also need to get some gear I hope you guys picked uh, your favorite character or your favorite class and just know that you can build your character however you want if you're a melee character, you can turn that character into a sorcerer if you want to by increasing your intelligence and all that good stuff. So the reason, the main reason why I started off with the Deprived is so I can show you guys how to create your character and turn them into whatever you want. So by the time I'm done with this game, I'm going to be a very strong melee character and also I'm going to be casting sorcery, miracles, and hexes. So just because you picked a melee character, that does not mean you have to stay uh, strictly melee through the whole game. You can actually be a melee character and cast spells. And you can, you can develop your character however you want, which is solely why I picked the Deprived. So I can show you guys how to build from scratch, um, to build your character from scratch. Alright, so I'll see you guys next time where we get some very important items before moving on with the game. See you guys next time on the next episode of Dark Souls 2.